Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. In this video I'm going to show you how to integrate your Unify Protect into your Home Assistant. And the reason I decided to do this video is that while it might seem very trivial for the more advanced users, if you're just getting started in Home Assistant or considering getting started in Home Assistant, this might come in very handy for you. And I'm not just going to talk about how to integrate the two systems, that's the easy part. I'm also going to spend some time on talking on why to integrate the two systems. What are you getting out of it? For example, you will be able to create automations that send you mobile notifications with a snapshot of what the Unify camera is seeing when something happens, when a trigger triggers. That's just an example, of course. So let's go over to the computer and start integrating. Alright guys, so we are at the computer and we are about to get started and our first stop will be the Home Assistant documentation on the Unify Protect integration. By the way, up until not too long ago the Unify Protect integration was a hex integration, but now it's official and it's great. So if you go through this documentation you will see which devices are supported to this integration. I'm running a UDM Pro, but if you're running a UNVR, it's also compatible, which is great. And scrolling down is, I think, one of the most important aspects of this integration. You will need to create a local user on your Unify console, not a UI account, but a local user. And the amount of privileges you will need to give this account actually depends on you. Now, Home Assistant said it is recommended you use an administrator account or a user with full read-write access uh, for most integration, but it's not required. What they mean by that is that if you're only looking to see camera feeds, for example, you can make do with just a reader account. But if you're also looking on set, uh, changing settings, and I will show you exactly which one will be exposed to you, then you might want to give this user account more privileges. So. That's exactly what we are going to do right now. I'm going to go to my uh, Unify uh, UDM Pro. This is actually a, a test machine I have uh, uh, for testing. I'm going to go into admin, admins and users. I'm going to click on the plus sign right here to add admin. And I'm going to check the restrict to local access only. This will allow me to create a local user that is, that is local to this specific console. I'm going to name this user Home Assistant. I'm going to give it a password. Now, what I want to do, since I'm not planning on integrating the Unify network application, I'm going to uncheck predefined role. Unify network, I'm going to select none. Unify Protect, I am going to start with full management and OS settings, none. I also want to save this as a predefined role if I need to add more users in the future, for example, I can do that and let's call it Protect Admin. So this user has full admin privileges, but only to the Unify Protect application. So actually, if we go back to the documentation, there is nothing actually we need to do in, in terms of prerequisites. So that's great. So that's the time to go into actually our Home Assistant instance. And this is a demo instance I have for demo purposes. And if you have your Home Assistant and Unify Protect console on the same VLAN, then a notification will come right here and show you that a new integration is found and you can uh, have a shortcut to configuring the integration right here. If you don't see this notification, don't worry about it. You can also go into settings, devices, add integration, search for protect. You will see a ubiquity logo. Click on it and select the Unify Protect. Host will be the IP address of your Unify console. Moving on, this is where we'll type our newly created user. 
and password. And that's it, actually. Let's click on submit. And now we'll see all the, actually, actually the entities we have in our Unify Protect. For example, that's my UDM Pro. I'll select a location for it. And click on finish. At this point, the integration part is done. That's it. That's all it takes. If we we'll go into our integration, we can see that, for example, on my warehouse G3 Flex camera, for example, I have several, uh, several configurations or settings I can change right from Home Assistant. And if my user account I created is, is an admin user, changes I make here will be actually done on the Unify console. If my user was set to reader only, none of these options, I will be allowed to change them. Okay, so if you see here on where it says hi, I can actually click on it and view the camera feed, which is great. And you can also see that's the added value of integrating a Unify Protect into Home Assistant. I also get a motion sensor. All the Unify cameras have motion sensors built into them. These motion sensors are now exposed to Home Assistant. And yes, I can actually create automations based on this entity as a motion sensor. It's a motion sensor. So this actually, I think, is one of the cool things about Unify Protect. And same goes to my other camera, same settings right here. And if I'll go to my UDM Pro, you can see I get also stats about my UDM Pro, about my hard drive, about its uptime, about the total storage utilization. I can even create an automation to alert me if the storage utilization is above a certain percent. I can definitely do those things. And this is actually the, the reason I say, why not to integrate Unify Protect in, into Home Assistant if you are using both systems, then I don't see any reason not to integrate them. In fact, let's go back to my warehouse G3, G3 Flex camera. And in fact, let's try to create an automation and use the motion sensor here as a trigger. So let's click on automations on the plus button right here. And, and Home Assistant already knows that I might be interested in motion started detecting motion. That's a, a bit of a tricky wording, but that's exactly a, 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 the meaning. And we can see that the device is our G3 Flex. And the trigger is that motion sensor started detecting motion. And then it's up to me to continue with the, conti with the conditions and what I want to, uh, to happen next. So that's the most, I think, interesting or value added part of integrating Unify Protect and Home Assistant. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and you've, and you've gotten a value out of it. If you liked it, please give it a like. It will help me get this video distributed to more viewers. And please subscribe to my channel to see my upcoming videos. So don't forget to hit the notification bell icon and I will, and I hope to see you all in my next videos. Bye everyone.